This is a cemetery near where we live. Just wanted to show you first. You've got similar cemeteries, maybe different depending on which country you live in. And this is ours. It's an old one. My father told us there are three places that you have to regularly visit. One is hospitals. I visit the sick. If you have any relatives, family members, friends, anybody in the hospital, you need to visit. Not because of the sick, necessarily, not just to be kind to them, although that is one of the reasons, but not necessarily for that, but for yourself. So you remember there is sickness and you appreciate your health. Second place is prisons. If you have any friends or family or relatives in prison, rightly or wrongly accused for any reasons you need to visit so you appreciate your freedom and the most important one is the symmetry he said you have to pay visits to cemeteries so you know and remember you're only dust and you shall return to dust a bit like Psalm 103 um, I think verses 15, uh, 12 to 15 I'm not sure it says for he knows our weakness he knows we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass, like the flower of the field. They flourish and the wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more. Your place won't remember you once you're gone. Once you've gone, your place, your place won't remember you. We take pride in things that we achieve, it's fine, but being proud is sin. Being haughty and proud in such a way that you think you can do everything by yourself you don't need God. You are God to yourself. Then that is where God says, I resist the proud. I set my face against the proud. I showed you the cemetery. The ground. This is where we go in the end. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. You're going there with all your riches left behind. You'll go in the ground. You won't take anything with you. George Soros, same. Pope Francis, same.
all the members of Freemasons, children and grandchildren of Rothschild, the same. Nothing you have in this world will go with you. And all the members of Bilderberg, Illuminati, and all the other names that you have, all the globalists, in a sense, and all their little puppets, Tony Blair, Bill Gates, Boris Johnson, Obama, Joe Biden, all of you. I'm calling upon you as Jonah of today. This is the voice of Jonah from England to you. This is what I can do. I can't get to you because you are playing gods. I can't talk to you directly. If I could, I would have told you directly. But this is what I can do. And I don't know how far this goes. It might never go anywhere near you. But I do my part. Repent. Do something amazing before it's too late. Your death, the judgment of God is upon you. The judgment of God is drawing near. On you and all yours. So do something amazing before it's too late while you're still on this earth and not in the ground. Repent. Leave a good name for yourself in the history. In the history of mankind. Turn around for good. Turn around and work and minister to the Lord instead of working for your own pocket, for your own gain, for your own masters. Work for the Lord, for your heavenly creator. If they've got things on you, if your hands are tight, if they're threatening you, if you're worried about your life, if even your life and your family's lives are on the line, if you turn around, you still have a chance to turn around. God will protect you. God will have mercy on you. Lead the nation, your nation, wherever you may be, your nation, out of slavery, out of this bondage. Be the Moses of today. I am playing Jonah of today. You play the role of Moses of today. Lead us out of here, out of this bondage. Inherit the kingdom of heaven. Why are you still alive? This is the promise of God. Lots of people, lots of Christians argue that one person's prayer won't change anything or won't have much of an effect or hardly make a dent in the nation's future. But I bet to differ. And Nehemiah proved otherwise. Not a single stone was laid to build Jerusalem's wall until after Nehemiah fasted and mourned for his people because he had passion for his people, so have I for my people. And I want you as a Christian, if you're a born again child of God, you need to do the same. You need to stand firm. Wherever your workplace is, wherever you live, wherever your community is, doesn't matter. 
if there are people in your community, especially in the governments, governmental offices, local government, national government, federal government, whatever, authorities, people are laying laws or setting rules in this disobedience to God, you need to stand firm. You need to go and tell them that they need to repent. It's your responsibility. It is our fault. It is our sin. It is us that we've drawn this nation, this whole world to this situation. It's not... Don't blame it on the sinners. They've always sinned. It is down to us. We didn't do our job right. Let's get the facts right. If we did our job right, if we stood firm, and church was church, stood the same, and stayed the same church as it was hundreds of years ago, evil would have no chance. Evil would have no chance to further and further his kingdom. We should have furthered our kingdom. We should have advanced our kingdom instead of allowing Satan to rule. Satan is the ruler of the world. But this earth belongs to us through Christ. Christians have gone wrong. Lots of Christians and lots of churches are teaching you wrong. Or you have misunderstood the Bible. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. That's right. That's true. The ruler of the world is Satan. That's true too. But the earth and everything in it belongs to the children of God. We don't claim it. That is the problem. We didn't claim it. And Satan advanced and claimed it for himself and for his kingdom, for his children. I made a petition last time on the beach and I asked everybody to stay firm and do certain things. Now, I'm asking Christians again to intercede just like Nehemiah did. Nehemiah had passion. One person cried out, fasted, moaned, and, and his prayers achieved a lot. The prayer of a righteous man avails much. Just like Elijah. These were ordinary people, just like you and I. They prayed. I'm not asking you to fast. You can do if you want, if God lays that on your heart. I'm asking you to pray, intercede, stand firm and tell people, those in authorities especially, those who are laying evil laws, restricting people, they've taken the word hostage. Like I said, my dad said, visit prisons and prisoners so you appreciate your freedom. We can still come out of the house and breathe fresh air a little bit. Don't let that be taken away as well.
they have taken most of our freedom from under our noses legislating bills and laws one after another without even announcing it just wake up wake up Christians you are the salt of the earth light in the darkness are supposed to be you're supposed to be light to shine in the darkness and expose the evil expose them whatever you are you do your part I do my part every bit counts drop by drop we can make an ocean the devil knows that they know the principles of God and they apply it and they have a measure of success in their lives and to the rulers to those in power I mentioned some names but there are a vast number of them I'm not going to list them all I say again repent because the judgment is upon you the judgment of God is upon you not my judgment not anybody else's judgment the judgment of God is upon you fear the Lord and he will forgive you you know I didn't really want to do this just the same as Jonah because I know how forgiving God is and their sins don't deserve forgiveness according to me but I am me God will have mercy on you that is his promise for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his loving devotion for as far as the east is from the west so as he removed our transgressions from us he'll remove your sins but repent and do something amazing turn around Jesus says when the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his angels and sit on his throne all the nations will be gathered together before him and he will separate the sheep from the goats the sheep on his right side and the goats on the left and he'll turn around to the right to the righteous and say come you blessed ones inherit the kingdom of heaven for I was hungry you fed me I was thirsty you gave me something to drink I was naked you clothed me I was sick you looked after me I was in prison you visited me and the righteous says Lord when did we see you hungry and feed you when did we see you thirsty and gave you something to drink when did we see you naked and cl we, we clothed you when did we see you sick or in prison that we visited you and he turns around and says to them whatever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters you did it to me and to the left depart from me you cursed ones for I was hungry you gave me nothing to eat I was thirsty you gave me nothing to drink I was naked you gave me nothing to wear you I was sick you didn't look after me I was in prison and you didn't visit me and they say again also when did we see you hungry and we didn't 
feed you? When did we see you thirsty and we didn't give you something to drink? When did we see you naked and didn't clothe you? When did we see you sick and in prison and we didn't visit you? And the same, it says, whatever you did not do to the least of my brothers, you didn't do for me. You, as a Christian, you have a moral obligation to stand for your brothers and sisters, for the vulnerable, especially the vulnerable. In your community, in your family, amongst your, in your community, wherever you are, your workplace, whatever. At the moment, we have to stand against the evil rules and rulings of the rulers. I have said this again and I say it again and I say it again and again and again. We are not against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. We are fighting a spiritual battle and our fight and our struggle is against spiritual forces in heavenly realms. Those are named at the beginning of this video, those rulers who are trying to control the world and have the world to themselves and kill off as many as they can. The spirit behind them is Satan and they have been empowered by the Babylonian and Egyptian spirits. The spirit that wants to control you and enslave you. And they have been doing this for quite a long time. And like I said, we are to be blamed ourselves as Christians. I'm going to pray for you The rulers that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I'm not going to call you again. But remember, you're only dust. And you shall return to dust. But before that, repent. May God give you courage, boldness, wherever you are, in whatever country and whichever power and authority you have, you've been given, you've been delegated. May God give you courage and power and boldness to turn around, expose everybody else who is doing still evil, tell them also to repent and if they don't, expose them. Do not feel threatened. Do not feel that you're losing your life. That you're risking your life. You are on the borderline to inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you only repent and turn around and do good, have compassion for your people, for your nation, and turn around for God and minister to God. Do what God wants you to do, not what your master or what the rulers above you want or what your greed, what your spirit, the spirit behind you, what Satan wants. I command the evil spirit out of you in Jesus name and I command any evil spirits including Babylonian, Egyptian or Persian spirits out of your bodies into the body of wild beasts and I bind them on earth as they're bound in heaven. God may give you the power of the Holy Spirit and let his spirit rest upon you and give you courage and boldness to minister to God, turn around from evil and repent and be baptized 
and announce and proclaim that you're going to work for the people now confess your sins and expose the ones the other ones that are sinning still in your departments confess your sins just like Nehemiah Nehemiah offered up a three-part prayer confessed the sins of his nation Israel proclaimed promises of God and requested success for his plans confess your sins I confess my sins and the sins of this nation O oh Lord forgive us have mercy on us and our fathers and our forefathers wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ and cleanse us and as you promised in your word that for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is your loving kindness and for as far as the east is from the west so has he removed our transgressions remove our transgressions O Lord wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ wash the sins of our rulers and soften their hearts let them have a heart of flesh and kindness and repent and receive salvation through Christ and turn around for God and for good and for their nations before it's too late if you are just an ordinary person like me living your life you want your own freedom keep praying keep interceding keep this is not interfering this is interceding you need to call spade a spade you need to tell it as it is don't try to polish it and make it look nice it is evil what it is is evil what's going on is evil if you have work staff members colleagues managers don't be frightened of your manager your boss your supervisor don't be shy to say that you're a Christian and you're standing on your principles on the Word of God and you're not going to the re left or right because they tell you you abide by the Word of God not by the laws of the land or the laws of evil planned by the evil if you're part of the authorities part of the government you're working for the government or you are part of the government and you know you've been doing evil I call upon you to repent the Ninevites repented in sackcloth and ashes and God forgave them and God didn't punish didn't bring about the punishment that he had planned and Jonah prophesied and that is why he was angry Jonah was angry because he told him that he was going to destroy Nineveh if they didn't repent there was a conditional judgment now this judgment is upon you unless you repent there is no escape for you and your death is drawing near you will turn to dust and your place will remember you no more may God have mercy on you and your soul and maybe that way we can have the freedom and the earth that God gave us God bless you